So, um, my opinion, I think that's a little bit different than the first scenario. Okay. And the reason is, is what is what is the retail value of an age shoe? It's less. I mean, in terms of what the market says mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. And also, as we start honing in on your buying, you will have bought that 2160 at 25% off two months before it was discontinued. You already have the margin built in that you can match that and still be making 45, 46 points. Mm -hmm. So in that situation, if my business was set up correctly, um, I would probably say, if you're a smart guy, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. um, so, go ahead. The first scenario is different. So go ahead. What's what you were going to say first? Uh, that that made me think. What what is our discount um, procedure on shoes? Currently, we wait two months after the new models, and then we bring it down twenty percent. Four months after the new model, we go forty percent on the older ones. Should we do it right away, like they can do it? You know, the other stores, or do we keep the value of the shoe because we're doing our fitting service? You know what I mean? I see. And you're talking about shoes where. The calendar's up on that shoe. Calendar's up on that shoe. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't do it that way. Okay. The way the way that I think about it is that number one, the ideal scenario is you're running down your inventory, to and you have very few, you right? Have very few sure. when the one, when the one comes in, mm -hmm. and I want to teach you guys how to do that. Okay. okay. The second the second thing is that when it comes to shoes, I usually determine. Is this a shoe where I can mix stock? In other words, is there enough similarity between the Adrenaline 12 and the Revlon 13 that I can just blend that together mm -hmm. and mix stock? If I can mix stock and I don't have a lot left over, I might not even mark it down at all. Mm -hmm. I might not. Okay. Um, now, but when I get to a point, if I so the but if the answer to that is no. I can't mix stock. What's an example of where you'd say you can't mix stock? I don't know. The Triumph is a great example. One year it's good, the next year it's dog meat, right? And so, do you just inspire? Do you, yeah. you adjust price then if the ver if the current versions went up? Like the Adrenaline 11 and 12 are different prices. Yeah. One's so one's 110. So in that situation, I think you just have to realize that one's 105, one's 110. And all, all shoe prices went up this year. Yeah, every, exactly. Every shoe. Yeah, that's you're right. And so we're dealing with. I mean, that's that's kind of the scary part of where the industry is, Anthony, in that. Most people are saying they're going to grow their business, you know, five, six, seven percent. You might grow it more here, mm -hmm. but um, and inflation is that much, yeah. so it's it's not unlikely that units might be down this year. Um, just as a side, mm -hmm. um, or like the stock can have different offsets, so the two shoes aren't even the same. Not, not, so same not a choice, right? Yeah. Not even a choice. Sock and re changed their whole line. So that so the remember the first question was: Are the shoes similar enough yeah. that I can blend stock? If that's the case, then I might not even mark it down at all. If it's not the case, then I base my markdowns more on am I broken? Okay. If I'm broken in that, I'm going to mark it down, and I treat it like a markdown, like I would treat mm -hmm. it in apparel. If I, and so if I'm out of women's eight, eight and a half, and nines, I know that my, especially my weekend staffers who aren't working, they're not going to, they're not going to see if I have an eight, eight and a half, and nine out there. They're going to go to where I know I have inventory because it makes their job easier, right? I, yes, I you're talking about going out to the clearance area. Is that what you mean? No, I'm talking about you have a sales associate who only works on Saturdays. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay? And he or she realizes that the Adrenaline 12 has changed for the 13 and you're broken on the 12. Well, that sales associate isn't even going to pull that shoe because mm -hmm. they're going to go where you have inventory because that, that makes their job easier, mm -hmm. right? So your choice really is to bring that shoe up front so that the customer can make the call. Yeah. Right? Up front, you mean in a clearance area? In a clearance area. Yeah, yeah. And, and what I like to do from a training standpoint at that point, and this, and that's, that's why it's not such a cut and dry answer, is when I think about the three shoes, bringing out three pairs of shoes, what mm -hmm. I ideally like to say is, let's say we have just a core cut. What's your number one selling shoe? Mirage. Mirage. <laughs> that's cool. So what's, what are two shoes that are similar to the Mirage? Canvara. Cadence. Cadence, yeah, flow. Okay. So, um, and the price points of those? 100 on the Mirage, Flow 90, Cadence 120. Okay, perfect. So, the Mirage is your number one selling. It's gold standard, right? It's right at the sweet mm -hmm. price point. So, we want that person to bring in the Mirage as the first shoe. Then they want to bring in the Cadence, which is a $20 step up. Mm -hmm. So, it's kind of like the premium version. Mm -hmm. And then, the third one can be a shoe that maybe you're clearing out. Mm -hmm. And what you're offering to the customer is... All good for you. The gold standard, plenty in stock. Mm -hmm. A little stretch, and also 
a great value for the customer that clears out an inventory situation for you. Mm -hmm. And that's how you distinguish both within your store and to your customer the kind of the spectrum of, yeah. of products that you have. Do you like doing spiffs for? I don't. Okay. Um, only because the I, I'm not a, I'm not a, such a such a black and white guy in these areas, but I generally don't like spiffs if they're What's a spiff? means I'll give you two bucks Kick if you back. sell the shoe. Kick oh, back. okay. Um, if if the vendor comes to me with a spiff. The answer is almost always no, because it what what it creates is basically an artificial inflation of demand, mm -hmm. and I, I've seen very few cases where after 30 days after the spiff is ended, that anything changed. It all goes back to where it was before. Mm -hmm. So that means you have customers then wearing shoes that you wouldn't have recommended for them. Yeah, yeah. Because that doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. So I don't mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. All right. Now, if you have a shoe that was successful, okay, and you're in a point where you got to get rid of it, and you're thinking, I need to get rid of this shoe, mm -hmm. do you have a problem giving 2 to $5 mm -hmm. to the employee instead of the customer? Yeah. I don't have a problem with that. Mm -hmm. To me, that's okay. Yeah. Um, and so, is it, is it reinforcing a behavior that, you, that will actually develop that employee over time? Yeah. And focusing on selling problems is an important part of an employee's job. Mm -hmm. So that spiff's okay. All of a sudden, yeah. selling a brand, random shoe is not. Yeah. Make sense? How about, um, do you worry about staff kind of, we've done contests, spiffs, where we've done, hey, sell a shoe, a sock with a shoe in a slow month. Encourage them, and they and they and it really goes up, and then, you know, we stop it, and it goes down. So do you worry about, they they don't really try as much. It's, it's part of their job to add on, right? But we kind of, we're kind of, do you know what I'm trying to say there? there? We're putting a carrot, but then we take it away, and then they don't feel like they have to anymore, I guess. So you, I, you think, concerned I think in that situation, the stores that I think have the best selling environment. Can I back up for a sec? Absolutely. All right. So many, many stores fall into what I would say a clinical environment mm -hmm. where they are really good at what they do. They know how to fit the person really, really well. And they take a very clinical, I'm going to match you up with the perfect shoe for you. And it's like they can kind of be wearing a white coat. Right? That's us. Okay. And a clinical environment is great. The customer appreciates it, but you run a risk. And that is of not being a, having a good selling culture. Mm -hmm. And a selling culture is really important for your retail business, right? Mm -hmm. Specialty running retail. You have to have both, especially mm -hmm. running and retail. Mm -hmm. And so the stores that I've seen that have the best selling culture that haven't forfeited their clinical nature are the ones that have spiffs going on all the time. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean spiffs like the vendor spiffs, yeah. but like like you just said, yeah. I've got, I will give you, um, this month we're doing socks. Yeah. And yep. we're gonna, our, mm -hmm. our typical ratio is... We sell one sock for every three pairs of shoes, and mm -hmm. our goal is one and a half to one, which is where the industry is, mm -hmm. and and we're going to move towards that. And you have team goals. You have one or two stars that actually get personal bonuses for that. Mm -hmm. And and I actually call these more bonuses than I do spiffs, but they're yeah. the same yeah. thing. We call them kickback stars. Yeah. 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 And um, I also think that having a certain metric that you're rewarding corporate employees on a quarterly basis, whatever mm -hmm. it is, unit per transaction, average, average sale, whatever, percent. is also a really important way to reinforce mm -hmm. a selling culture. Mm -hmm. Because that's that is their job. Yeah. But like all of us, we what what we're, what's reinforced, what benefits Pavlovian. Yeah. We all have that tendency, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So is everything okay, Amy? It's like not it's totally freaking out now. What I is? think you guys ruined it. Well like it's not like it's not responding. 